All right, so I wanted to make a little video where I worked through a couple of these synthesis problems to give you some pointers, remind you some things, and show you what I'm looking for. So <clears throat> everybody should get at least one and a half of these problems because I'm going to show you how to do it. So we're going to start here with C. And I want to show you two different ways that you can do this. One more working backwards and one working forwards. And to give you an idea of how varied the solutions can truly be. So I'm going to do ret a little retrosynthetic analysis here. If I look at my product, right, and I'm going to make this a little thinner. There we go. And I want to think about where, what could I have made this from? And I like to start off with this one because sometimes people don't recognize this double bond for what it is. For instance, when you start on number 1A here, you see an acetal. That gives you a heads up about chapter 19. Sometimes we forget right here what we've learned most recently and how a Wittig reaction can give you a carbon-carbon double bond. So if I think about this going backwards and wanting to use my Wittig reagent, right? the Wittig makes that alkene and one side was a carbonyl, and I'm going to make this side the carbonyl because, uh, I mean, I'm starting with an alcohol over here, all right? So if, if I wanted to react this to make our product, well, then I can just use a Wittig reagent to make that. In fact, I'm going to leave that for a second, and we'll talk about how to present it. This would be extremely easy to make from this starting material, right? It's just an oxidation. It's the same number of carbons in the same arrangement. And so I would just need to do two steps to get from start to finish in this particular synthesis problem. They're not all gonna be two steps, but this one could be. So I've done my little retrosynthetic analysis. I wanna do Wittig here, and I wanna do an oxidation here. So if I start, and you can show me this in a couple ways. You can do each step and show me the intermediates. That's often easier for me to, to grade, but you certainly don't have to do that. And like on the test, you can't do that. So it's okay if you just wanna write the reactions out. But your first reaction would be PCC, right? Because we want to oxidize, but we wanna stop at an aldehyde. We don't want a carboxylic acid for a Vitic. Then what do I need to add? Let's analyze this. There's one, two, three carbons here, and we're attached at that center carbon. So it's gonna be our triphenyl phosphonium C, C, C. All right, so these are methyl groups out here. And then this carbon, you can either show the double bond here, or you could show phosphorus with a plus and carbon with a minus. Either way is fine. And this would give you that final product. All right, pretty simple. And so one way to, to go about these is to look at the final product and think about the functional group you're making. And because I did design this synthesis lab to, to get you to use chapter 19 and 20 um, reactions. That being said, you don't have to. So I want to show you another way that we could have done this one. So if you're having a hard time with retrosynthesis, you can always start from the front, right? So I'm starting with this alcohol, and it has one, two, three, four, five carbons. I'm going to just look at the, the main chain here. One, two, three, four. And the product has one, two, three, four, five, six Right, so in, in, in total, we go from five carbons to eight carbons. So we are extending the carbon chain. Now, after organic one, you may want to jump straight to the acetylide reaction, the triple bond, but I'm going to tell you that that has got more limited usefulness because you can't make branches like you can here or that like you need here. So what I jump to when I need to extend a carbon chain is a Grignard because you can 
uh, add to a carbonyl and you can make it branched. So there are two different ways that you could approach that from here. I could either make my alcohol into the grain yard or I could make it into the carbonyl. It's gonna be easiest just to make that into a carbonyl. Again, I want, a, I want an aldehyde here, not a carboxylic acid, because grain yards don't work with carboxylic acids. That acidic proton kills them. And you don't want like a as carboxylic acid derivative because it can add twice. So now I need to think about what am I adding? If I look at my product here, all right, I'm adding this piece and it needs to add in the middle. So the carbon that needs to be nucleophilic needs to be secondary. So I need this Grignard reagent. Now I know uh, Grignard is followed with the second step of water or H3O plus. You need to number this because if you put these all on the arrow together, the water will kill your Grignard. You answered a question about this in your first lab. So let's think about this product, right? Here is going to attack right there, and that's gonna go up. So we're gonna wind up with one, two, three, four, and then this carbon is five. So I have five carbons. On carbon two, I have a methyl. On carbon four, that's where my OH is. And then carbon five has two methyls with it. So now I just need to figure out how to get that double bond. Now, what we're fortunate in this case that we're looking for a Zaitsev double bond. So we don't even have to turn the OH into a better leaving group. We can just use acid catalyzed dehydration. You can just use H2SO4. If you couldn't remember that, you could use a tosylate and then remove it with um, a strong base. All right, there's lots of options here. But this would be another way to make this same product from that starting material. And if you are doing a problem like this on the exam, what I'm expecting is that you're going to write just the reagents. I don't need the mechanism. I don't need a novel telling me what each reagent is going to do if I'm just asking for a synthetic route. But I do want to see each step numbered. Now, where you can accrue partial credit is, let's say you know you need to um, uh, dehydrate last and you can't remember how. You could put four and then say what you want it to do. Um, and you'll lose points for the reagents, but you'll get points for the order and, um, and that's a, a way to build up partial credit. So this is another way that you can present your synthesis. I encourage you on the lab to do it this way so that you can catch mistakes and I can see what you're trying to do, especially if you want to finish it early and send it over to me, say Saturday or Sunday early in the day, and you want me to look at it. This, this way will be a lot easier for me to check over. Okay, so everybody should get C. You got two options from me. It's not the only two options in the world. If you found another way and you want to know if that way works, shoot it over to me. The other one I want to get started for you. I'm not going to show you the whole thing. I would like to, um, I want to look at this guy here. You got a lot to do here. And considering we just did a Vitig, you might think, oh, I can do a Vitig here. And you would be right. <laughs> um, you, could, you could make either side into the carbonyl. I'm just going to put the word Vitig here. Um, and you could do a Vitig, but you're still going to have to build something. And it's a lot more steps to build the illid. So you, you absolutely could use, like if this is going to come from the Vitig reagent, you absolutely, let's rewrite this, could use triphenyl, phosphine, then carbon, CH, CH3. But the, this side, if you wanted to make that the Vitig reagent, you're going to have to show me how to make it. Because the rules, please read the rules. 
Using only reagents with three carbons or, or less to build your organic molecule. The only carbons you don't have to count would be the three phenyl rings in the Wittig reagent, right? So you don't have to worry about those. But anything else you're going to have to make. So what I want to do is I, I think the Wittig is a great way to go with this. So what I'm going to go a little bit backwards and say is I need to make this so I can use a Wittig reagent that only has two additional carbons in it. But that means I need to make this five carbon piece. So what I'm going to do, and it doesn't give me any other rules. You need to always look for the rules. Sometimes I might tell you that you have to start with alcohols and then you'd have to convert the alcohols. Here, those three carbon pieces can have any functional group you want. So I'm, I'm telling you, Grignard's going to be super helpful for building carbon-carbon bonds, but you could do this in a number of different ways. What I'm going to do is a Grignard. I know that I could make this from this carbonyl and... Uh, well, let's use bond line structure, and this Grignard reagent. Now, this Grignard reagent only has two carbons, so I can use that. This carbonyl only has three carbons, so I can use that. So this is as far back as I have to go to abide by these rules. So retrosynthetic analysis might be helpful here because I don't know just looking at this the first time if I would have thought, hmm, I ought to use propanol. No, you might need to do a little bit of that retrosynthetic analysis to help you figure out what, where to go. Now, this first one might be a little easier, a little more obvious, because it's only four carbons in the functional groups at the end. This one, you definitely want to plan out. There's a bunch of ways to make that, to make C, um, some that are shorter and some that are longer. And so you uh, that retrosynthetic analysis can be really useful. Hopefully, kind of working through my retrosynthesis here will help you finish B, and now you have at least two synthesis problems uh, that you can feel confident with.